Although my school days long ended back in 1990, I have been back to school since, first as a parent and now as an MP, I frequently do assemblies in my constituency. And it was at one of these last week that I discovered that the Conservatives are quite literally rewriting history. I discovered that alarmingly the current A-level modern British history curriculum is blatantly biased, bending over backwards to paint the Conservatives in a good light. No mention is made of the Blair Brown government starting with the 1997 landslide which bequeathed us the minimum wage and ended child poverty and youth unemployment for a generation. But even if excluding that period can be explained away as being too recent to be history, there's the inexcusable glaring blind spot of the great 1945 Labour government, under which the welfare state and NHS were both born. To understand our present and future, one must understand our past, and that includes the 1944 Butler Education Act, the advent of the NHS in 1948, and even the expansion of John Major's PFI under New Labour, which all resonate with current debates on the school funding formula, the NHS winter crisis, and the collapse of Carillion. This is not about unduly bigging up Labour, but surely credit should be given where credit is due, and it is dangerous to deny that these things ever happened. All major historical tides should be included, rather than selectively and ideologically going for cherry-picked bits to present a partial picture, which will only result in brainwashing our kids. And Rupa Huck joins me now from Cardiff. Do you regard this then as censorship by the Conservative government? Well, I mean, it seems that there are lots of bits missing from this um, a uh, new timeline that's been put in place since 2014, suspiciously. So I've had loads of teachers emailing me since I asked that question uh, a week ago. And they've said things like that there's uh, no mention of the miners' strike, or grieve isn't there. Apparently the poll tax, which brought down the downfall of Thatcher, merits only a small paragraph in the OCR main textbook. Right. Well, to, to, well to, to... Nothing about women, LGBT rights, that kind of thing. Apparently the number of women compared to men in that syllabus is 1 to 100. Right. Well, to challenge your um, claim, um, the department has said our new history A-level curriculum requires students to build on their understanding of the past through experiencing a broad and balanced course of study. And this includes ensuring students are presented with opposing views, which couldn't be achieved by explicitly ignoring a political party from that period. Surely that's true. I mean, it's how you slice and dice things. History by its nature is so broad that you have to be selective in any curriculum. But they've done a syllabus which is 1930 to 1951. Uh, and then um, there's a 51 to 1997. So, and it's, it's about Churchill. Everything is through the prism of Churchill. Well, though, this of course, sort of hagiography. Well, I can understand that maybe for kids, if you, if you latch on to interesting characters, it can make it more interesting. But this kind of hagiography, and that's the words that a teacher in a leading public school in the southwest said, that it's sickening. Right, he but this is one it. board you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, OCR, but there are only A -level. three there boards. Are, there are, but, I mean, it cannot then be the case that if the Conservatives were trying to rewrite history wouldn't they be doing it across all the exam boards for I mean, there history? are only three boards nowadays so it's not like when you and I were at school there was London University there was this and that so there's um, uh, AQA Pearson and OCR and OCR has the lion's share of the market so most kids are being channeled through this apparently the other one uh, the Pearson has a general strike module that um, the uh, alternative to all this that one of the teachers that wrote teachers have been writing to me saying that they're going to down tools they're so disillusioned oh right well let's put that, of the well, books. we've got the chair of the education select committee i mean uh, you must be horrified if you think well, there is some hit conspiracy that is actually being fed into a level history being taught that dates of 1951 through to 1997 where obviously the conservatives dominate um, is actually going to be well, the subject of when the... I was at school I certainly learned about the NHS and other sure, things but we're talking but, about now but what I, I, I do think this is a, 
uh, Looper is a, a wonderful MP, but I do think this is a bit of an exaggeration. Some of the greatest events of the 20th century were shaped by Conservatives. Now, that inevitably, Winston Churchill, Margaret Thatcher being the first woman Prime Minister. You but know, the why Labour should government the 1945 of, Attlee government well, be excluded? The, it isn't. You always learn about that and why Churchill lost that election. And Churchill was then, then got re-elected afterwards. I mean, we cannot help it if some of the greatest events in the 20th century were shaped by Conservatives. Should this be investigated? I mean, if there is the wealth of evidence that Rupert Huck has set out, with teachers threatening to down tools because they feel that it is being rewritten. Should your committee be looking into this? Um, well, I'm always happy to look at things, but I think that uh, there are uh, bigger priorities to worry about in terms of difficulties in school, in terms of education, in terms of alternative provision. Right, do you accept that, Rupert Hook? There are bigger issues to talk I mean, about. No, I mean, I think it's an issue that should be looked at in, uh, with everything else. I think that it's not a, a mutually exclusive binary either or. And I mean, the 45 election is given as an example of uh, Churchill's wartime leadership. It's kind of brushed aside, really. In well, the I had main to write essays about why OCS. Churchill lost that election. I know, but uh, uh, candidates uh, are asked and to identify... And about the Labour government and the the introduction of the welfare state. I remember it very well. Is this is a serious allegation um, that well, Rupert is making? I mean, do you do you have confidence in the curriculum in A-level history if, as Rupert Huck is saying, it is being written in a biased way to look at the Conservatives over Labour achievements? Well, I certainly don't think those periods of history where we had a Labour government should be omitted uh, from that his history A-level timeline. And I was there uh, at as education questions when Rupert asked her question, and I listened yeah, very we closely. Sat next to each other. We were. And I listened very closely to the Minister Nick Gibbon his response, and he made no apology for it. He acknowledged. But the, 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 essentially, um, the curriculum is where it is, um, and said it was a result of a consultation. Now, we know there's many consultations that take place in government where people don't necessarily listen to all the contributions that are made from everyone that contributes to it, and therefore perhaps but, this is something that they should be looked at again. Well, except, I mean, Rupert Hook, you've just said there that even when they looked at the 45 Attlee government, the Labour government, they skewed it to look at the achievements of Churchill as a war leader. But the details of courses, individual courses, are decided by exam boards. I mean, are they complicit in this too? The direction is set from the top and candidates are asked to identify conservative strengths and Labour weaknesses. I mean, that just looks so lopsided. Well, doesn't it? Well, I'd like to see this, but I, I think it's it's a bit it's a, it's a bit of a mountain out of a mole. And as as I said, well, what what can we you do? You might say that the from fact, your perspective. Well, but the greatest events, some of the greatest events in the 20th century, were shaped by Conservative uh, prime ministers. The first woman prime minister, Churchill, a wartime leader. There's a film about a fantastic film about Churchill at the moment, His Finest Hour. I mean, it's the inevitable, hour. The Darkest Hour. I beg your pardon. It's inevitable that these things will have a, have prominence. But, so you seem to be conceding then that there is going to be a dominance. A, a predominance of focus in an academic subject like modern British history on the conservative achievements of the 20th century. No, I'm not conceding anything. I'm just saying these people had such a impact on public well, life. The fact that they are Labour conservative, governments. it's inevitable that they're going to be uh, uh, people are going to study them in a big way. Right. Well, do you not accept that? I do not accept that. And there are Labour leaders and Labour governments that made, that made a massive contribution to this country in the last century, and they should be included and, and included to, in the. In the um, are you, going to, Rupert, are you going to ask Robert Halfman's committee to look at this? Yeah, I mean, he said he's game, his door is always open. He's a nice chap, uh, so, yeah, I think we should take this further. Thank you. Well, on that consensual <laughs> moment that you're uh, a nice chap, we'll and, it, and we will look at it. <laughs> I will look at it. I, I can't have a formal inquiry necessarily, but I will look at it seriously.